I am a bit puzzled on NAFTA. Uh, suppose NAFTA goes ahead, modernized, improved. What does that do for infrastructure? Well, I think if NAFTA goes ahead, you've got to think about how do you optimize infrastructure. We talked a little bit about rail. Rail infrastructure between the U.S. and Mexico is a real problem, super slow. Border uh, ports are a real problem. The land ports, for instance, what are the top three ports in the U.S.? You think Los Angeles, you think New York. The third one is with Mexico. It's a land border with Mexico. So one of the things we have to do is, if we're going to really uh, may optimize NAFTA for job creation in the U.S. and competitiveness of the region, so we've got to figure out how to address those border issues. What happens if the U.S. pulls out of NAFTA? What happens to infrastructure projects then? I think there's a big issue. There's a lot less momentum in terms of improving infrastructure then. But you also have to, what really happens if we pull out of NAFTA is that the tariffs go up between the U.S. and Mexico. That's another driver for increased efficiency for better logistics, right? So no matter what happens, we're going to see improved infrastructure between the U.S. and Mexico. So NAFTA does not equal the wall, but they tend to get tied together. What if they build that wall? What's that do for infrastructure? Well, I think, you know, I mean, the wall, everybody sees that as a big infrastructure project, but the wall is going to have all sorts of bridges and gates and doors and that kind of thing, because you're still going to have the kind of incredible trade between the U.S. and Mexico. I mean, a lot of automobiles, 40 percent of import of automobiles, that stuff was made in the U.S., exported to Mexico, comes back. A lot of that goes to Canada and then comes back again. We've really created a true free trade zone. But one other idea that I wanted to mention to you all is if you've got the border, and everybody focuses on the border, border's a problem. If you were to actually develop Mexico about 100 kilometers interior and, and, and unite the Atlantic and Pacific coasts and turn that into a green technology producing region, that would be a tremendous infrastructure project which would create an enormous amount of growth and get rid of a lot of the problems we have right now. Given the political tensions between the U.S. and Mexico right now, I'm not quite sure how feasible that would be, but I just want to get your take on how you feel about building the wall yourself. Is that something that you want to touch? Because I've been hearing that some big companies think it's too politically sensitive. They don't want to be associated with building that wall. Well, I think it's super politicized, right? I mean, the, the wall issue is super politicized. I think what we really have to th think through are the security issues. And, and one of the things that the Trump administration is spending a lot of time on is, is looking at the fact that a lot of the people that come into the U.S. now, they actually come from the Northern Triangle of Central America, They from Guatemala, uh, El Salvador and Honduras. And so the idea of, of creating real viable economies in that region, it would be tremendous. So are you bidding for projects on the border wall? Uh, no. No. Uh, so we said that President Trump has said this is at the top of his agenda for 2019. At the same time, it's going to cost money. Any of the things you just described sound like they would be pretty expensive. Is there any appetite in Congress to appropriate the kind of funds that are required for infrastructure at this point? You know, for me, this is a, a fantastic question because what's really, what, what looks like it's happening with, with President Trump's infrastructure plan is you're kind of removing the federal government from the conversation. You're focusing on states and municipalities. But the big question is if you look at the, the Democrats, the Democrats want to, as one congressman told me, write that big check. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to fill this gap in terms of where does the money come from. And even if the states and municipalities are going to bring in private investment, somebody's got to structure those projects. Somebody's got to produce the feasibility studies. And that capability doesn't exist in the public sector in the U.S. right now. So Washington is going to need to play a role, and you're going to have to bring Democrats and Republicans together to make this thing happen. You're actually working on this blueprint 2025, sort of uh, setting up plans for infrastructure projects. What exactly are you doing there? That's a fan I appreciate that question. So we've brought together 100 CEOs, public and private, to focus on creating an infrastructure plan for the next administration, this administration, and over the next 10 years. Because really what's happened is the infrastructure plan that we've been, the infrastructure funding mechanism, the model that we've been using since the 1950s, that's exhausted. And we need a fit to figure out how to really create opportunities for U.S. companies, bring in private investment, and deepen the balance sheets of U.S. companies so U.S. firms can actually invest in own infrastructure. So final question, permitting. Because one yes. of the things we hear is forget about the money. We just can't get the permits, right. whether it's federal or state or local permits. Is there any appetite to try to preempt all that and streamline it? 
huge, there's a huge amount of initiative going on in Washington. The idea is to go from, it's an average of nine and a half years now for an average project, get that to two years. And I think there the Trump administration, administration has spent a lot of effort and, and is producing some real results. And we're working on that as well because you've really got to, you can, you can get to two years without causing any environmental problems. The Dutch did it, they were up to 10 years. The Canadians did it, they were up to 10 years. These are not environmental bandits. These are very responsible countries. It's an efficiency issue.